Hey guys, welcome back. So we just finished up the hand planing video where we walked through squaring up all six sides of this piece of walnut, which turned out really nice. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Because um, like I said, I go through um, the hand planing process for squaring up a piece of stock. Um, so anytime I finish up a planing session, I gotta go back through and, and tune up my plane irons. It's, uh, it's a necessary evil, nobody really likes doing it, but like I said, it needs to be done. It's, it's necessary to, uh, to use your hand planes at their full potential. So I'm going to go over a uh, square plane blade, which you'll find in your joiner and your smoother planes. I'm going to be using the Veritas Sharpening Jig from Lee Valley Tools. I've had this since the beginning, and it's, it's lasted a long time. It has a repl You can buy replacement parts for every single piece of this. Um, Norton Waterstones is what I like to use. Um, they've proven true throughout the years. Um, we're going to start on a 1,000 grit stone and then we're going to walk all the way up to a 4,000 grit stone and then finish with uh, a leather strop to polish the blade. Um, a few things that I like to use in addition to that is a spray bottle to clean the stones off and of course a 6 inch rule. Also, obviously you need a bucket to soak your stones in. Um, and I just cut a piece of plastic um, and put down inside of that bucket to separate my stones while they're soaking because you don't want them hitting each other inside of it. So I'll walk you through flattening your stones um, and we'll go through the plain irons and the marking knives, show you how to set up the jig, and we'll, we'll go over some angles for different things. And hopefully you get something out of this video segment. So stick around. First things first, we want to, uh, we want to flatten our stones. Um, what I like to do is just take a, a lumber pencil and put some lines across the stone so that as I flatten I can tell where the high and the low spots are. It also helps to let me know where I've been on the stone. Now I like to flatten with the thousand grit um, stone and before I start flattening I want to put a slight chamfer on the edge of all, uh, all sides of the stone. And what this does is it will help prevent any chipping if there's a high spot on that part of the stone. You want to do this on all parts of the stone now that we have the all the edges chamfered on on our stones we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start flattening so I'm gonna take the two 1000 grit stones and rub them together here get a shot of water and just kinda work them in a circle Okay, just doing that little bit here, you can see on this stone, if you look at the pencil lines, I have a low spot here and a low spot here. So we'll just keep going until we get those worked down. Okay, now that we got those sides worked down, I'm going to use a thousand grit stone and I'm going to hit the other side of, of the one stone until it's flat. They do make flattening stones for this type of thing. Um, I've never purchased one, I've just always done this and it seems to work just fine. But those flattening stones come at a heavier grit so that you remove the, the material a lot faster. But I've, it seems like it would be real easy to go just a little bit too far with those and you waste unnecessary parts of your stones. So. I just rub my stones together until they get where they need to be. One thing about wet stones is they are pretty messy to work with, but I don't worry about that too much. It easily washes off. Just working down those high spots until we meet up with our low spots. You can see how my stones are sticking together right there in the middle. That means that there's hardly any air in between these stones and that 
it's starting to adhere to each other by just just simply the water being on it so I can tell by the feel of that that it's uh, pretty well flat and all the pencil lines are gone so we can go ahead and start sharpening our irons all right so we got our stones nice and flat now now we're gonna clean them back off all that extra grit we're gonna clean it off in the bucket being sure not to bang the stones into each other you don't want to chip them so I noticed that the plain iron that I was going to sharpen was actually set up for 30 degrees um, and I want a uh, 25 degree angle bevel on this um, so I'm, I got a piece of 220 grit sandpaper um, and this sandpaper is a wet dry sandpaper and, um, and it, it's made for metal so it does a good job of, of establishing the initial bevel for this before I transfer over the stone. So I'm going to hit this on the sandpaper until I get it down to the 25 degree that I want. And then we'll go ahead and we'll move over to the stone. So our 220 grit sandpaper did a really good job of giving us our initial uh, bevel established here on this iron. Um, you don't want to once you have your your plain iron clamped up inside of your jig you don't want to go moving it around so you want to go ahead and move right over to the stone. Now you can see from my sharpening station here it's not a real complex setup but it does work. I just got a series of clamps around to hold these pieces of plywood which keeps my my stone relatively secure <clears throat> and uh, I won't go into great detail with this uh, Veritas sharpening jig because you really should read your manufacturer instructions when you pick up a tool like this because uh, Veritas does a very good job of giving you detailed instructions on how to set these up also gives you sharpening angles and that type of thing but uh, th this sharpening jig works great it has this registration fence here and uh, it has the angles lined out on it so that you know what you're going for I'm going for a 25 degree angle on this uh, this iron here for my uh, my joiner plane okay So we just got done with the 220 grit sandpaper. We have our initial bevel established and I'm going to start running this on a thousand grit stone. Try to apply even pressure on the across the edge of that iron. So just a few passes on that 1000 grit stone you can start to see that our um, our edge is starting to develop here and you can always tell because um, because you'll get a little more polished look across that edge um, because it came off of the 220 20 grit sandpaper pretty rough so you can really start to see where that's cutting in at and uh, we'll keep going until we get that edge to roll over onto the back side and then we'll know all the way across if it rolls over you know that you're where you need to be and you can go ahead and move up to the next grit as you work your way through the stone here, start to uh, roll that edge over on the back side. We're getting pretty close here. You also want to periodically just flip that stone. That way you get even wear across your, your stone as you work through it here. So we got our bevel angle established. For 25 degrees um, it's something I forgot to mention earlier when you transition to your next grit before you step up always just kind of pick up your stone and just kind of flatten that back you want to flatten the back of that iron the reason I do that is because I like to feel that that edge roll up all the way across the uh, the back of the iron as I sharpen each through each grit because that lets me know that it is evenly um, it has evenly sharpened that edge and that's just something that I like to do in between each grit
Okay, so we we worked this this iron across that thousand grit stone after we just transferred over from the the 220 grit stone to establish our, our bevel. Um, and you can see that on this this end down here, we haven't quite gotten to it yet with the thousand grit stone, so we have a low spot there. But the rest of the blade has touched the uh, the stone evenly. Um, so we'll continue to hit that thousand grit stone until we hit this low spot and that blade starts to roll up onto the back side and you can feel it with your finger. And then we'll move up to the next stone which is uh, 4000 grit. Okay, we're starting to get a nice rolled up edge on the back of this iron. So, this would be a good time to stop check our work here nice even edge across there so now I'm just gonna keep this in the jig flatten the back of it real quick that way I can tell where my edge starts to roll up on the next grit and uh, we'll go ahead and move to the 8000 grit polishing stone and, uh, All right, so we're working our way through this 8,000 grit stone, and it doesn't take much here. Light pressure, even pressure, across the edge of that blade. And I like to move it back and forth across the width of the stone as well, flipping it. All right, so we worked our way through this 8,000 grit stone here. And it really just puts a nice polish on the edge of that iron. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the sharpening jig. And the next step here, I'm going to take my six inch rule and put it right on the edge of that sharpening stone. With our six inch rule butted right up against the edge of that stone. Bevel up on the plain iron. I'm going to lay this as close to the other end of that stone as I can get. You want that edge right up against it. And then you're just gonna three or four fingers on the edge here and you're just gonna work that blade small strokes all the way down the length of that six inch rule. And what this does is that just gives it an angle for those two points to meet in the middle of this plain iron to get that edge nice and sharp. Just a couple passes should do the trick. Now you could definitely get away with just stopping at the 8000 grit, but I like to take one more step further and hit it with the leather straw. Because you can see that this plain iron is pretty sharp But we can go a little bit more with that. So I'm going to take my leather strop, hit it with polishing compound. I use Flex Cuts uh, leather uh, polishing compound. And what I'm after here with this, the best way that I can describe this is if you were to put this blade or this iron underneath of a microscope, how would it look? Would it have little hair like uh, would it have like a little hair like figure to it or would it look really smooth and polished? Well the truth of it is even at a thousand grit it's still going to have a little bit of a hair like structure to it. Um, so the leather with the polishing compound takes that out and it gives you almost a perfect razor like uh, polished edge on there. And that really gives you the full potential of that iron. So the trick to the leather is you want your two fingers, two or three, um, and you can see how I'm holding this iron nice and secure, thumb wrapped around, and I have my fingers extended beyond the edge of the blade, okay? And I'm just light pressure. You don't want to apply much pressure at all down into that leather because the leather will flex a bit, and you will sort of roll that edge over. So just light pressure, nice easy, strokes here 
and you'll know when it's where it needs to be. And then maybe hit that back side a few times. And uh, that's about as sharp as you can get it, I think. You can tell how much of a difference that leather makes. That's pretty doggone good for a plain iron. Well, there you have it, guys. We went through the complete process that I use for sharpening my hand planes. And once you finish that process, you get the satisfaction of pulling these great shavings off of whatever stock you're squaring up. So thanks for stopping by. Make sure you hit subscribe down there, the little red button. And I'm going to continue to come out with more videos, guys. Sim, um, if you would, please just send me some requests on what you'd like to see. And uh, I'll try to get you what you want, guys. Take care.